right. All right. Oh, there, there we go. There you go. Right, being that it's 6.30 and we have a quorum, I will call the meeting of the Conservation Commission open for May 3rd. And we do not have minutes to approve, so we will table that. And we have two new public hearings, and the first one is for Pleasant Street, notice of applicability for an RDA for a linear 2,163 linear feet of gas main installation for a house proposed um, construction at 252 Pleasant Street. Is anybody presenting, John? Or? Not, Pretty not online, and there's no one here. Um, what we could do is um, table it, to see if somebody does make it here, okay. like traffic or something, and then we can move on to 19. I want to take a motion to the table. I'll make a motion. Second. Move the all in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Um, next we have 19 Scotland Street for a notice of applicability for request for termination for a construction of an attached garage. Is that what you're here for? Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, the property owners are here this evening, Rodrigo and I don't Catherine. Catherine, mm -hmm. welcome to the meeting. And uh, they would like to put this addition on the back of their house and have a, a driveway that comes around here and into the this end of the house. The plan shows the erosion control barrier installed in the approximate edge of the wetlands. Um, I don't see any issue with the project. Um, it's a real tight lot, so to try to get a roof drywall into there, it's going to be very difficult for them um, with the amount of wetlands that they have on the property. How big is the addition? Or is that a 27 by 25? Okay. Where's the 50 foot right there? Uh, the 50 foot is right at it. That's that's why they moved it to that to that spot because of the where the wetlands are. I told them they couldn't uh, wait up enough. Yeah, it's 50 feet exactly. Yeah, and that sheds in the one spot too. Uh, it was there, but that is it. Lawn all the way up to the wetland line, roughly. Yes. This point? Okay. I do. If you bear with me for a second. Um, I'll show you the plot plan that was originally used for the house. It's a little different orientation, so the street is at the top of it, but here was the proposed house. Here was the wetlands that is uh, determined way back in, um, what's the date on the plan? Seventy-three. Yeah, it's like it's. Yeah, it's seventy-three. Yeah, so if if they were um, putting putting in the house now, of course we would have a probably an issue with it with the with the wetlands being there and so forth. But that's the original plot plan. How long have you guys been in the house? Yeah. Almost six years. Six years. Yeah. Again, zero and that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's see. And there's enough setback for the driveway um, to get it around on the edge from the property line. Is it setback? Yeah. The the distance from the driveway to the Pro property line. Oh, the property line to the edge of the driveway. How much is this? I'm not sure what it is. I would just, I mean, normally the building inspector, if he's already, have you submitted plans to the building inspector yet? Yes. Okay. He, he didn't say anything about the driveway. Okay. He just say about the garage and so it should be 20 feet from yep. the property line. Okay. Then but not the driveway. Yeah. If there was a problem, he would have said something about the driveway. Yeah. That was I, I just shared this with um, people that, that are on the, the uh, remote 
Uh, just to explain this a little bit to you, this is the original plot plan. I'm going to click off and bring up the proposed one. Can you see that? I guess you can. So it's a really tight lot. Um, if I could have figured out how to get a, a roof dry weld in there. What's a roof dry weld? It takes the runoff from the roof through the downspouts and into infiltration. Oh, you've been using the back lawn there up to the shed, up to the property, well, up to the wetland for grass this whole time, right? Yes. Nothing else is in there? No, you're saying in between the, <coughs> the house and the shed? Yeah. It's just grass. It's grass. Yeah. But, oh, no, that section just like a, it'll be a, a driveway all the way to the shed. Yeah. So you already have a driveway to the shed? No, I just have a gravel for right just now. Just gravel. Yeah. And you're going to replace or add to the deck with this garage? Basically, yes. taking the deck and expanding Yeah, you're going to take the deck down because right now where's the, the garage, there's a deck. Yeah. So we're going to destroy the deck and make the foundation, on. raise the, the walls and then put the deck on top. A rubber oh, roof okay, and yeah, deck. And just, which should be on top of the garage. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. been been like that for a you guys aren't planning on putting a pool, are you? No. No. Okay, no. I, I think he's, <laughs> nor he is not good pools. It's too expensive and not using. And it's not a good spot to put it. <laughs> not going to be able to put it. Yeah, on top of that, the garage is going to be a sunroom. Give me a lap. A sunroom? Okay. Sunroom, yeah. yeah. Three season or all season? Pretty much all season. Well, also then, yes, yeah, so yeah, I mean not really too much. Mm -hmm. Right up to the 50s, so it's not like you're taking down trees to make this happen. So no, mm -hmm. there's no trees behind there, and it's small enough that it falls outside of the stormwater bylaw. Right. So, all right. Anybody? Any other questions? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close. I'll make the motion. Second. Move and all the favor. All right. And I'll entertain a motion to issue a general um, order order conditions for the project. Email. For the building of the um, addition for so the garage. Okay. I'll make the motion. Second. Move and say all the favor. Aye. All right. So moved. All set. Yeah. Just, mm -hmm. just a second. Um, I can't tell whether. Anybody that's online okay. is here for that or not? <laughs> Talking to somebody else there. <laughs> uh, any anybody that's at home watching this, um, are you here for the 19 Scotland Street? <laughs> I don't know what to do. Yeah, I don't. No, nope, there's nobody talking as well. Okay. Well, good luck. Thank you. Um, only other thing, I probably entertain a motion to allow work within the 50. Temporary? Temporary work, because yeah. they're going to have to get around it to do that one side of the, the garage. I'll make that motion. Second. Move and second. All those in favor? Aye. So moved. Aye. All right. Now you're all set. <laughs> so what we'll do is um, we'll issue you in order conditions, I'll let you know when it's ready. You can come in and pick it up, mm -hmm. and then you'll be able to get your building permit. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, at least I will let the building department mm -hmm. know you can get your okay. permit. You still have to check with it. Okay. All right. Yeah. You're welcome to stay if you want, or your part here is done. So. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Here we go. All right. It's up to you. We we like to have an audience. So. <laughs> <laughs> Which one are you here for? I am Patrick McGrath. I'm here for Thank the you. Thank you. cutting of wetlands behind our house from another neighbor. Okay. okay. Then we will do our continued public hearings first, John. We have Zero United Drive, Notice of Intent, General Stormwater Management Permit. 
Yeah. All right, yeah. uh, they sent in, uh, we've got the Five, review three. from our 53G today. Yeah. And I uh, supported it to the engineer, uh, but I had already asked them to give us a, um, a continuance request because I knew that they weren't going to make any changes today. So uh, they want to continue it to the 7th. Seven. Okay, so full month. No, 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 it's, it's the next meeting. Two, three, two weeks. I'm sorry. 17. 17. Okay. So I'm, moving to seven I'm looking at it saying 7, but it's 17. Sorry. Okay. Then I'll entertain a motion to continue Zero United Drive to the 17th. I'll make the motion. Second. Move and second. All those in favor? Aye. So moved. Um, next we have Off West Street, Old West Street for the ANRAD. How do you? They, they um, have asked us to continue this because they're not certain they're going to go forward with it. And mm -hmm. so um, I checked to see if there was a way we could return some of that filing fee that they gave us, which was 70000 or something. So um, apparently that we can return some of it. And um, they're still hoping that they can make something out of it. So they wanted to continue to, to, the to the 7th. Um, to the 7th. Correct. The so <laughs> oh, June 7th. Oh, June 7th. Yeah. So I will entertain a motion to continue to June 7th for the uh, Old West Center Street. I'll make that motion. Second. Move the second in. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So move. All right. Next, we're into the administrative part of. All right. 373. 373 Crescent Street. Um, we finally have everything. And um, what we were waiting for was um, the area that. Carol, you were here when this all started, but. Um, it was a site plan to create contractor storage and contractor base on this uh, commercial property. And I discovered that the abutter years ago had filled an area on, on the property. And it was determined by the commission not to make them pull it out. Um, and the commission worked with the applicant and for a $10,000 um, gift to use uh -huh. on some other conservation yeah. land project. Uh, they can leave it in place rather than destroying it, uh, disturbing it now. And um, and so he's given us the check for $10,000. Um, he's also created a conservation easement on that so the abutter won't be able to do it anymore without uh, penalties from the commission because it's a conservation easement, not just a wetland area. Um, I discovered over the winter before all of this that uh, a butter was pushing the snow from his his uh, trucking operation right into this area. So we put in a barricade and we ha now have a, a, a conservation easement on it and we have the $10,000 gift towards putting that type of effort into a worthy project. And um, at this point, we have the ASBILT, all the other forms, so I'm recommending uh, approval of the Certificate of Compliance, COC. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make that motion. Second. Move and second. All in Aye. favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. We have a 34 North Main Street Certificate of Compliance request. Well, before you do that, um, I think we need a He's signed the conservation easement, but there's also a place for Tim to sign it, so we need a motion for Tim to sign on behalf of the commission. Okay, I'll make that motion. Second. Move and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. All right. 34 North Main. Uh, this is the dentist's office. Right, I'm right in the vicinity here. Um, it's been completed for a long time, and so everything's fine with it. Um, and I'm recommending issue a COC on that one yeah. with, with no bond or anything. And I'll entertain a motion. I'll make that motion. Second. Move and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Um, now we're into the update parts. Okay. 586 five, Manly Street. 586 Manly. I contacted the owner of the land to explain that the commission was willing to. Uh, reduce the reduce the fine 
and um, he came in and talked with me and he says he's fine with that. He'll pay half of the, the very top amount that I had calculated. And um, he's just asking that um, if he could give us that fine when he passes paper because someone's going to be buying this property and he's going to uh, be able to use some of that money from the sale to pay us. So I said, as long as I see progress, otherwise we'll start finding you again. And so we seem to have a an understanding. So I'll, I'll um, just stay on top of that one. I'm sure he wants to sell it too. So yeah. And he sent me the agreements that the new owner, who's going to bring the whole site into compliance, will. Um, he showed me the agreement that's making it obvious that it's happening and it's not just something that he's talking about yep. or, or saying. So I, I trust them at this point. Good. Uh, 561 Walnut Street, that's uh, where Leo's Nursery used to be. Um, we've received a certificate of compliance for an old DEP file number um, 11, which is really under the almost under the Hatch Act instead of the DEP regulation. That's how far back that goes. But um, the new owner is going to be doing a site plan showing existing conditions there. And as soon as he does that, we can act on the file number 328-11 and issue that certificate. But we'll also then be able to um, do a notice of intent on the new work that he's doing. Okay. Um, 389 West Center Street, septic discharge to Stone Bay. So, um, 389 West Street, that's the Boston Tavern Plaza. That they, they don't own it, but uh, that's where that is. And um, I was out there on the second and saw that it overflowed again. I sent them another. Um, fine notice of violation for three hundred dollars. Told them the commission isn't going to lower those fines, the other ones that were sent to them already, and that we would be uh, if we don't see any change in the situation, we're going to be contacting the EPA and the D Department of Public Health. And I asked them for ordered him to give us the pumping records to show that he's pumping it. And I'll be able to determine whether he's pumping it regularly enough and if he is and we'll order him to pump it daily if we have to. And that's gone out to the attorney that's representing him. And uh, we'll see where that one falls. But I did get a call from uh, a town resident who had spotted it as well and explained to him by copying in the email that we're still pursuing this and he's getting very irritated because uh, he happened to have uh, known how the town responded to a similar incident and he only wants things to be fair uh, instead of somebody getting away with something that uh, the situation that he's aware of couldn't get away with. So he only wants things to be fair which is the way the commission likes to do it anyway. So that's the status on that one. Um, proposed minimum water table, uh, I think we can probably take care of a couple other things, especially since we have uh, a resident here. Yep. Um, skim milk bridge, I'll do the same thing. I have to discuss that one with the commission. West Street. We're, that's where we are, West Street. So this is, uh, I didn't have a street address at the time, but um, we have uh, a butter who observed vegetation cutting in a uh, wetland, or what appears to be a wetland area adjacent to the butter's property. And uh, I went out and I did an inspection, and I'll call up the, the pictures that are that pertain to it.
So I'll start off with um, Google Earth. So this is West Street, uh, 33 West Street. West Street is right here. It's hard to see in this uh, aerial photo, but that's the house. The street's here, so it sits very close to the street. There's a shed out back in the wetlands. The yard goes to this area right here, and then it drops very quickly down to a low level. And as you can see, it's all vegetated, and that's a 2000, 19 uh, photograph. So I'm going to stop sharing that and call up a photo that I took when I was at the site. So this is down into the wetlands with the shed that's there. Uh, the, I was standing up on top of the, the bank, which is right here, and looking north at this point, and I'm going to pan easterly to the back where there's a stream. There's a uh, small stream that flows between this property and the condominium um, complex that's behind us. But you can see that this is all uh, wetland vegetation and soils. Um, they actually have to have some type of walkway to keep from getting muddy to get into the shed. And I'll go to the next picture. That's that walkway to the shed. This is the area that's been being cut and cleared. So are they so doing this by hand, or did they have like a little machine out there? Uh, you know? Yeah, they had what seemed like a very unprofessional company. Um, just these guys, they showed up in almost like white hazmat suits, and they had chainsaws, uh, brush cutters, and uh, yeah, so they, they were doing this all on one Sunday. So it's not like it's, they, would, they weren't taking out like, obviously, there's not like these big trees or anything like there's that. Well, there's one tree over here oh. that had been cut. And it's on the property of our community, Meadowbrook, oh, yeah. by, uh, by the Boston Town. But it wasn't like a tree company that came in there? No. No, okay. No, no, they, they would just had chains. Yeah, so at least it's not nothing like they got big machine rail right. Yeah, so they didn't have cranes and bucket yeah. trucks and stuff so, like that, but okay. I will tell you that um, I suppose if I were going to go out there, I would put on yeah, I was just gonna say because yeah. of ticks, mm -hmm. uh, the poison ivy, the, the briars and things. So I, mean, I would put that on myself too. But um, I, I knocked on the door and spoke with the homeowner. Um, they're new. They just uh, bought the property not too long ago. And they wanted to clear this and have the property surveyed so that they could use this. And I told her I would discuss this with the commission. And um, as the aerial photos show in the past, this area has been vegetated. It's not really a lawn, and you can tell that. I mean, somebody's been out there um, over the years, but it's definitely not a lawn area. Um, it may have been a garden at one time, but I didn't really pick that up in the aerial photos. Just too wet. Yeah. Um, and so my recommendation to the commission is to uh, inform the homeowner that um, that if they wanted to do anything in that area, that they would have to have the uh, stream bank flagged by a botanist, the wetlands flagged by a botanist, and then we could proceed from there. I don't know. That looks like they didn't be able to do much. Hey. Ian, to tell you the truth, if we wanted, we could tell them get them. The shed out of there too. Well, it's probably. Or would that be more more of a disturbance yeah, to them? Yeah, that definitely would be. 
Well, I can't, like John said, I can't see improving <coughs> that to make it a lawn area. It's, <laughs> it's never going to grow grass. <laughs> I mean, so you live flat. in the condos? I live in the one you can see. Yeah, I was just going to say, so you must be right there, right? Yeah. So at least you can keep an eye, and thank God you will keep an eye. Yeah. So if they do, for some reason, happen to think they can get a bobcat out there or something, at least you can tell us. Oh, I certainly Considering it, like they, it seems like everybody does stuff on Sundays or on the weekend. Yeah. Yeah, they, as I said, they did take down a tree that's on our property, and that's not that's not an issue for this commission. Um, I'm trying to get our uh, our board members involved. So far, it's like everything's fallen on deaf ears because it only affects one unit, you know. Oh yeah. But it's the, it's collectively our property. So. But yeah, we noticed myself in D4 and my neighbor in D3 noticed the wetlands there's a little brook that hangs back there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It, You'd be 200 feet away from that. Yeah. So John, did they basically just cut a lot of brush and yeah. debris and stuff like that? It wasn't like there were any trees in there that looked just, like... It looks like just one tree. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was just one. Yeah, there were smaller trees. One good sized tree. Now was that the one that was on your property? Yeah, I have pictures if you'd like to see. Well, I'm just wondering whether we need to require them to do any replantings or any revegetation at this point, or? It's, it's a, um, probably about a eight inch at the most diameter um, tree. And it's, it's really not a very, uh, it's really a brushy type tree. Okay. Um, I'm just thinking you could really enhance what's there if they would spend some time and money and plan. I, I was told they were their intentions were to put a big fence around the whole area. Yeah, I don't know if that was true or not. But. Yeah, then they could start doing stuff on the, on the inside. Yeah. Sounds like that's. What? But they if they're going to do anything. They're going to like John said. They're going to need to get a botanist and a plan and a, approach us with something to, to come up with. And, we typically don't even yeah. let them dig post holes in a wetland. I'm not trying to say anything bad, but it's just that some people, they just don't get it, and they think they'll go out there and just, oh, make it look better, and oh, I'm sorry, I didn't, mean, didn't know I had to do that again. That's what I was going to so, ask in terms of, like, this, this homeowners even know that they're violating. No. No, no it's clear that um, they weren't even aware that there was that kind of an issue, um, and so... I explained that there are wetlands there, that there are regulations that need to be followed, and that I would follow it up after we had the meeting. And um, I will give her a call tomorrow and explain to her, you know, what the requirements will be and what her alternatives can be, and then she can decide how she wants to do it. I'd say clean the clean the stuff out of there right there and just let it go back the way it was. Don't do anything to it. Yeah. It'll fill back in so in pretty quick. Yeah, yeah that's why I'm not so concerned start. about the tree because mm -hmm. the, if that's left alone, that, that that whole area will sprout up through the saplings. Yeah. Probably if it was completely covered with put, uh, weeping willow, it might help suck up some of that water too. <laughs> so that's that's what I'll explain. Okay. All right. um, well, now, what about, like, well, even if, I don't know, they'd have to come in front of us if they wanted to put up a fence. Yes. So, yeah. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for looking up. Yeah. We oh, appreciate absolutely. the phone call. Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> I hope there won't be more. Uh -huh. <laughs> Me too. Us too. Thank you. Have a good evening. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So, 11 Progressive Avenue. Uh, what I see that um, that there is a interested party for Zero United Drive. Oh, okay. So do you want me to give them an update? Sure. Yep, yeah, we can. Zero United Drive, can you hear me? Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, good. So um, we received a review from the peer reviewer for the Conservation Commission and I forwarded it to the engineering company that's doing your work. And They've asked for a continuance to the next meeting. Did you hear that? Yes. 
And if you contact your engineer, you'll see what the peer reviewer had written and what he requires. And if you, if we're having problems with the uh, sound and everything else on this remote meeting, give me a call at the office tomorrow and I can go over with you. All right? Right, so 11 Progressive Avenue, about a year ago, I got a call from a, a person who would, uh, had blocked their telephone number, so I never knew who it was, had explained that there was a resident up on the end of Progressive Avenue where it meets um, Spring Street, is it? Yeah, but we can spend. Yeah, it's been here. And he was explaining that this person is going out onto conservation land and cutting trees. So I immediately went up there. I poked around, tried to hear somebody with a chainsaw to try to find out who it was, because the person who called indicated that that individual was up there doing it at that time. And there was dead silence. And I hung around a little bit, came back a little while later, same thing, I could not hear a thing. And um, decided that I would come back a different day and same thing, never heard anything. So I sent a general letter to all the residents in that neighborhood. I kind of had an idea after driving up there a couple of times where I saw wood piles outside of a house, freshly cut wood, that kind of thing. So I kind of had an idea, but I didn't target anybody. I just said to whom it may concern, and I sent that same letter out to all the residents and said, um, please stop, and if you want to contact me and discuss it, any additional information would be appreciated, and I never heard anything. So uh, I think it was the end of last week, I get a call from the same person again, with the number blocked. And uh, he said, I know you tried, because I, I know you sent that letter out, but the fellow is out there right now doing it again. So I got up, got right up and went out, and um, as I was, driving up to the area, I thought that it would um, be this cutting situation. I saw a four-wheeler with a trailer behind it with all these cut up pieces of wood on it. So I backed up, pulled in the yard, and I said, um, I'm a conservation agent, um, and I believe you may be cutting trees on the conservation land, and the individual says, yes, I am. I I, uh, I'm only cutting trees that are down. And I said, well, they're not dead, obviously, because it looks like pretty good dry, wet wood and needs to be split and dried for a while before you can burn it. He said, well, yeah, they had blown down across the paths that are out there, and the horses and people who walk, or, you know, they just can't get through. I'm clearing the path for them. And I said, well, um, we can't have everybody out in town just cutting trees. Uh, I said, so if you would allow me to get your name and telephone number, I can provide your name to the Open Space and Recreation Committee, and they might be more than happy to have you come out and help them maintain some of our existing trails, and you'd be able to get some wood with permission. Otherwise, you can't do this because we, we just can't have everybody doing it. And he agreed and gave me his business card because he has a um, small contracting business. And um, I believe at this point we're in good shape that we don't have to do anything more. Um, but if I get that call from the block caller again, um, then I'm going to have to bring the hammer down. But the guy really did seem to be sincere. So, uh, I mean, because I've even seen that like on the sides of the roads, I'm thinking to myself. I mean, sometimes it'd be nice to go in there and just clean up the area to make it look better. But if you do think about it, sometimes you got animals that live there. They use the trees. Yeah, the rotting trees. They use the rotting trees yeah, and stuff. 
but sometimes, like, if you do have a trail, right? That's what I'm just saying. Like, if if a, he's willing to yeah. help the open space, and he didn't do some trail cleaning and maintain them, and yeah, there's people using a trail. So as long as he goes through the right, right, that's right, like doing it, it's be great. Might be something we want to think about coming up with a program or something for that, because yeah, anybody who wants to come to volunteer to help keep the trails clean and yeah. does it as a group that. One what, what of their goals is to have a uh, volunteer, a core of volunteers. And it's not the same person all the time. It could be, you might have a half a dozen people. And if you need two people, and uh, you have 12, six to 12 people on this um, volunteer list, you might be able to get somebody who's available at that time, or yep. if not, on next week type project. So I'm gonna forward his name to the Open Space Committee, but again, we're going to keep an eye on because if he was, like I said, he sounded very sincere and apologetic, so I, I, I believe him, but if, if I hear about it again, then we have to do some enforcement. John, I appreciate the way in which you work with people. Um, you're very, um, consider, you're very respectful and um, really awesome. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I'd like to give him a badge. Conservation agent. <laughs> <laughs> well, Wes has one of those on top of his it's head. Smokey's hat. So, uh, I don't know what exactly it says. It probably just says uh, Mickey Mouse. I'm here. a bad man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so 76 South Elm Street. This is the uh, the property that's at the corner of River Street and South Elm Street that um, has an agricultural activity on it. Uh, I took the aerial photos and all the plot plans I could uh, research from the various town departments and determined that um, <coughs> they had disturbed about 7,000 square feet of land and so it qualified because it was over 5,000 for an administrative stormwater permit. So they they issued, they uh, applied for an administrative stormwater permit and provided a fee. And um, I'll be sending them. Uh, administrative doesn't need a public hearing. Um, I'm bringing it up because if you have any uh, concerns, I want you to be able to tell me about them. Um, Are they going to get the, see, south eastern side of that property stabilized? So the runoff doesn't keep going into the road? That's one of the conditions okay. <laughs> in the administrative permit. In that 7,000, whatever it is, that's all paved of what they've disturbed? So they had some paved before, and, they and then they had crushed. some gravel areas yeah. and crushed stone. And so they, um, they paved some of the crushed stone areas, and they have a crushed stone driveway that goes out to the intersection of South Elm and River Street. I see there's a sign as soon as something was said. I think the neighbors said something or whatever. Oh, it was probably when you said something, they put the signs at the end for uh, something with, as it's using it as um, not a driveway, but looks like it's only used for- Horse. Yeah, you know, horse use only, but it's still a driveway. <laughs> so it comes right out into the middle of an intersection. Yeah. <laughs> And the neighbor there, it's, he has says, said to me that he's looked outside the window because he's there all day working, and he just can't understand how that, think anybody thinks that's right because safe. he's seen the truck back <laughs> out, part of it's sticking out onto the road right there in the intersection, get out, shut the gate, what is people coming around? That's just an accident waiting to happen. So. So that's half of, half of the story I've told, I've told you, because they had to do a administrative storm, or at least a stormwater. They have. Yeah. Okay. But we don't have the authority to, to approve a new curb cut. I mean, there's no curb there, and I was told that, but um, there is no curb cut there. But it doesn't matter. It's called that just when you yeah. create a new access to the road. And it has to go through the Board of Selectmen's office. So I provided them with uh, an application that they can fill out with the Board of Selectmen. 
um, and we'll see how that progresses. So we've only got part of the process taken care of, but one of the conditions will be to stabilize that area um, down on River Street where the water runs out. I think even if they just left it the way it was, grass. Right, the if they reseeded it, it or done something to stabilize it, but it's just but the even open if, gravel and sand. But even if they had done nothing to it, just left the grass, yeah. put in the gate, granted, could it cause an accident, but if they just didn't even do anything to it, just put a gate in and just used it every now and then, to be honest with you, they probably would have, wouldn't have made more of a deal of anything. Right, nobody would have made that issue out of it. It would just been, oh, it's just something yeah. that you go down once in a while. <laughs> since they To lead horses out of it. Yeah, and but since that had it. graveled it down, mm -hmm. then, yeah. So, 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 so especially bad. considering there was supposedly a moratorium on multiple road cut entrances per property that they were trying to only have one, so oh. that you weren't getting five or six driveways out of one piece of property. Oh, yeah, well, actually, they and have what? Now they one, only two, have three. three. Yeah. But it's big. Yeah. Big one on that one yeah. side, it, and the other one's just a normal one. I mean, they're big enough to fit a trailer truck through. Uh -huh. I mean, yep. Yeah. So, all right. Thank you, John. Yeah. yeah um, good. <laughs> so, next we have um, 25 River Street. Carol, say you? Not today. Okay. <laughs> That's the one down by CVS, right? I'm thinking. This is the, the one by CVS, which is um, the, the doctor's office, or used to be the doctor's office. Um, yeah. Is that the same doctor who owns the land up next to South Street? Maybe it's not the oh, same Oh, no, no, not Dr. Carey. Okay, no. is that the same one? I don't believe so. I don't think so. So the um, brick old off doctor's office building which is now a residence is here and they did a septic system repair up here uh, they have not done anything to stabilize this and they're parking vehicles on it and it's muddy and it comes right out into the street every rainstorm if we went out there today we would see what it looks like so that's the first picture This is the second picture. So um, again, that's the driveway. Rock, water runs right off of it down here to a catch basin. And the next picture will be the one that shows what happens when it gets to the catch basin. You're thinking before too long that's going to have to get cleaned out. So this is definitely a, a stormwater violation because it's putting sediment laden water right into the drain line that dumps directly into the town river by the Arch Street Bridge. And um, I started off the first letter uh, telling him that um, the owner who is not living there, he's He's the landlord and people rent it from him. The landlord lives in Easton. And I sent him a letter, regular mail, um, explaining that he's in violation of the stormwater illicit discharge and that he needs to contact me immediately to discuss ways to uh, stop this from happening. And I said, that's your, your first step in the enforcement. I said, uh, any um, ignoring of this order will uh, result in fines. So the second letter went out because he didn't get back to me and I went by another rainstorm and it's doing it again. And um, I sent him a second letter saying that he was now owes us $150 and uh, ignored. I told him to respond in so many days. So rather than sending them a third by, register, uh, by um, regular mail, and usually people like this, when you send 
certified, they don't even bother accepting it. It just gets returned unopened, which in the court of law is no excuse for them. Uh, they have an opportunity to read it and if they choose not to. Um, what I'm recommending is that we have our, our constable in town, serve them, and it will cost the commission anywhere between 25 to $50, depending on the miles. Um, I'll get, I'll get a quote, but anywhere between that amount. Then add that to the fine. Yep. And that way, there's no doubt that he's got it, mm -hmm. and there's no ignoring it if it was sent certified. Uh, he can ignore it after that, but we'll have an attested uh, document that says that it was, was served on it. Now, what did the septic design plan show on that property? Because if I remember right, there was like a two-car driveway that was there, and it looks like they're parking way more than two cars on the property. Can you even park on top of that thing? I, I don't know this for a fact, but there's a camper out back. Which I was asking to ask, because it looks like it may be in the wetlands. If not, it's very close to it, because I remember when the permitting happened for CBS, we yeah, had... Right, right along that whole... Right, along that whole back corner mm -hmm. was... And it may be that somebody's accessing through there to get to the camper and with that. Yeah. I, I don't know that for a fact, so I don't want to um, but but claim that. But if, if they're driving over the septic system, if that's not designed for the weight, the it's weight, gonna, it's gonna, <laughs> yeah. I mean, even the owner probably doesn't even know what's going on. If he's not even, well, <laughs> it doesn't seem like he's even acknowledging anything. Well, I think if, if like, you received two or three letters, <laughs> I'd be driving over to see my property and find well, out yeah, what's I know, going but on. I mean, you know, like, if he'd come over maybe once in a while and see what was going on, he might say something, but yeah. you never know. Yeah. I mean, if that thing collapses and he goes, what the heck happened? I'd be a little miffed. So usually stormwater violations are not residential people, and, and if they are, they're just minor things, and we usually can resolve it very quickly. But like I said, this is, this is major. Um, it not only damages the water in the Taunton River, uh, Town River, sorry, Town River, um, it, it's going to cost the town to clean this catch basin. They have to clean out all the sediments. And yeah, they do a normal cleaning on, on certain streets in the town every the year. But why add to the volume that has to be carted away? Because I'm sure it's not just per catch basin, it's the volume because the reports I've gotten from uh, the person who cleans these for, on behalf of the DPW, it's all on volume. So he he has to take that to a landfill. Oh, yeah. He gets charged for the volume, not <coughs> for catch base. Yeah. So anything we can do to minimize the cost of the town, and this is why it's important. A lot of people would say, oh, you know, what's the big deal here? But it's very important mm -hmm. overall in the town's uh, stormwater management system. So I'm asking if you can give me a motion to use funds to hire uh, town council to go out and serve us. Yeah, and add to the fine. Yeah. So yeah. I'll entertain a motion that we hire a constable to serve the violation notice. I'll make that motion. Second. Move and all in favor? Aye. So moved. All right. Uh, going back to, uh, we haven't, oh, we haven't done the, we haven't done the, Oh, Pleasant Street. Pleasant Street thing. Is I'm assuming it's the gas company that's putting this in. Is anyone on for the gas company? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, great. Yep. Sorry. Um, I've been having audio problems, so I'm having a hard time hearing you guys. But um, are you planning on hearing the uh, Eversource project right now? Yes. Okay, great. So, can you hear me? I can, but not super well. You want to take the speaker closer? Yeah. <laughs> all right, we're going to try moving the speaker a little closer to all of us. Uh, Rebecca, can you present your plan, or do you want me to present? I can definitely present. Um, I actually have like a little 
PowerPoint thing to run through, if that's okay? Yes, perfect. The plan, or I can just bring up the plan. Um, Water body. 
um, also general good housekeeping and planning and sequencing. Uh, the structural BMPs that they would use would be straw compost bottles, um, which are shown in the plan, and uh, the details are provided to the contractors as part of the Eversource BMP manual. And they'll also provide uh, test phase and inlet protection within the code phase. Again, they're going to restore everything that was served by construction. Uh, if there is any uh, disturbance along the edge of the phase roadway, it would, be, um, it would have temporary or permanent reheating, stabilizing areas with straw materials, and uh, reheating surfaces. Eversource has contacted to us uh, at the BCA to perform weekly compliance monitoring throughout construction to make sure um, that the contractors are following the BNP manual and uh, staying out of the wetlands and following any any conditions and requirements from the Wetlands Protection Act or your bylaw. So the project is uh, intended to commence in mid-May to early June. The project is going to take two to three months to complete. Um, again, uh, BNP will be installed. Uh, it'll be entirely within the existing roadway layout and only temporary impact. And so we are requesting a negative determination. And with that, I will open up the question. So is this gas line being put in, is it just a regular maintenance uh, update of it, or is it because there's a leak? Uh, it's neither. It's a, it's a uh, reliability project in terms of taking two uh, Eversource is connecting existing gas gauge to recruit um, reliability and gas supply to the area. Okay. So it's not it's not a main there is a gas made in this location. They're connecting two existing ones that are located in other places on one. There's none in that They're section. They're filling in a gap. It ends at each oh, okay. So it's just all okay. Okay. John, do you have anything? I have no issue. It's very uh, well presented, and all the BMPs are typical of what they do with their projects, and I've never had an issue with their projects. So I'm recommending issuing a negative determination. I'll entertain a motion for a negative determination. I'll make that motion. Second. You can say all those in favor? All right. Aye. And I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. I'll make that motion. Second. You can say all in favor. Aye. So moved. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Uh, skim milk bridge. Might as well do that one. At the last meeting, I asked the commission to um, authorize the use of some of your trail account money, which we had uh, considerable uh, balances in, towards uh, filling in the gap that's been left between what was appropriated at town meeting a couple of years ago uh, using some CPC funds and um, using a grant from the Taunton River, uh, Taunton River Watershed Alliance, or no, no, it's not that. Uh, Taunton is it Wild and Scenic? Taunton River Stewardship Council. There we go. <laughs> There's so many of these uh, groups that sometimes hard to keep track. So yes, the Taunton River Wa uh, Stewardship Council had uh, voted to um, give us a grant that would reimburse us for funds used for the skin milk bridge. Problem is, as I, I think I mentioned at the last meeting, the town can't send out a contract with the idea that maybe someday there will be some money in there to pay for it. They have to have the money by the way. So um, I had asked that you um, authorize about half of what I'm going to ask tonight um, at the last meeting because I was unaware that 
the money that we had used for the administration through J.M. Goldston, who was handling all the preparation of the contracts and requests for proposals, was coming out of that appropriation, and so it actually lowered the amount of available funds that we had. And I assumed, after talking with the town accountant, that we could put some of that money back in. Well, it turns out we can only put back in what was expended this fiscal year, not from previous fiscal years, which makes sense. So uh, that left us with a, a gap again. And so um, what I'm looking for now is to fill in that gap. We had contracts that totaled $22,300 for both the um, historical contract to do the nomination for historic National Register. and. And then there's also money in there for doing a structural analysis to see how stable the bridge is and possibly in the future get some more uh, preservation funds to stabilize it for, so that seasonal flooding will not damage it any further. Uh, so it's a total of 22300 After having this fiscal year's money uh, that was done by Jane Goldston and taken away from the appropriation, we now have $13,257.90 back in the appropriation. And what the accounting switch was is they took that money that was out of the appropriation and took it um, out of the available administrative funds that the CPC has every year. So they can use 10% of their funds towards administering the program. And there was leftover funds in it, and so we were able to make the switch. No, no monies, but just a, an accounting switch. So we need $9,042.10. And, 40, $9 and um, almost like a prayer was answered, we get $10,000 for a 373 Crescent Street to put towards a conservation project and I think this you go. I think this is a good project to, to, to put me. that to. Yeah. So I will need an, a vo another vote to um, authorize this amount and rescind, res basically rescinds the last meeting's vote to have half of what we're getting tonight. I'll entertain a motion to approve transfer of what is it, nine thousand forty two dollars and ten cents. In ten cents from the wetland fund. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Good, thank you. Now we can, now we can issue those contracts <laughs> that they've been... And get them done before the end of the fiscal year. Yeah, exactly. So we don't have a, another accounting problem. Yeah. Yep. There's still good money in there. So I think this, other than uh, for signing the invoices and uh, forms, we have to discuss the uh, proposed water table separation regulation. So I'll call up what I've got on that. Um, let me see. I gotta get back to my menu here. So this was the proposed wording. <coughs> Just in case there's somebody at home that wants to see this. Um, so at the last meeting I presented this document to you it had a preamble describing why it's important. And um, it, it indicated that if the water table was within 30 inches of the natural ground surface and had an, or sorry, or was classified as hydric soils or hydraulic group D in the, on the USDA Natural Resource Conservation Surface, 
Service Web Soil Survey, which is an online um, uh, application, and anybody can check that out before they start looking at land. They would have to um, provide a 50-foot buffer strip of, of naturally occurring vegetation between property lines, lot layouts, and the bottom of a filled slope. And then the second issue here is that if there's um, a stormwater management system, whether it's roof drains or stormwater basins, it's got to be two feet above seasonal high water table uh, for resident residential development and three feet above the seasonal high water table for commercial and industrial development. And the reason for that is typically commercial and industrial has a lot of uh, contaminants that come from the commercial vehicles that can uh, fall on the parking lot and get into the stormwater system more so than the resident residential property. So you need a little bit more separation. Uh, so after presenting this to you, and I asked you to kind of think about it a little bit, uh, and uh, also you'll notice there is a waiver ability here um, in this first paragraph, so that if there's hardships, you can you can grant a waiver, and uh, it would have to be for just costs, and it would have to be something that um, is just not arbitrarily decided upon. It really has to have a have a reason for it and mitigation to compensate for the granting of a waiver so we could work out something. Uh, what I did is I wanted to come up with some sketches to kind of see what happens in the case of a property having uh, this type of soil. So I'm going to call up a sketch that I did for a case where there's no fill. They go out there, it's a fairly flat piece of land, they put a house in, it doesn't need any fill because it can go deep into the ground and the water table. And so I'll call that up and let you see what that looks like. So this um, is a standard size lot, 150 foot frontage, which is minimum for the town, 200 foot deep, which is uh, the minimum that it has to be to make the 30,000 square feet minimum area for a lot in the town of West Bridgewater. This house has a two car garage. It's 64 feet along the back, 28 feet along this side, a deck. Um, it's the typical house that people build in this town. It's probably a, a two-story colonial style home, uh, full basement, driveway. It's 43 feet off the uh, left-hand side and 43 feet off the right-hand side. And so since there's no slope, there's no issue here. And you can use the 30,000 square feet in a 150, you know, 150 by 200 foot lot with no issue. But now if you have to do some fill, I'll, um, I'll stop sharing that and call up another one. So I'll start with four feet of fill. Of course, there's obviously, you know, in between things, you can go one foot of fill, two foot of fill, but I think you'll get the idea as soon as I start showing you what happens here. Oh, not, I'm not raising my hand, sorry. <laughs> my hand gets going here. All right, so this is a case where there's four feet of fill being put on this property because of uh, the high water table. Um, four feet of fill with a three to one slope, which is 12 inches high here and three feet 
from here to here. So this is roughly three feet. This is roughly 12 inches. So it's a slope that's like this. It's generally considered a, a gentle slope. Three to one means for every foot elevation you go up, you go out three feet. So it's pretty simple, three feet times four feet is 12 feet. So these lines off the foundation are 12 feet off the foundation and would be the bottom of the fill from the, from the house. So in order to comply with the regulation, you gotta stay 50 feet from here to this new red line on both sides. That leaves um, 31 feet between the fill and the original, or let's say what would be normal lot line. So you have 31 feet on both sides. And if you use the 50, it now makes the minimum frontage 188 feet by 200, which then makes the lot 37,600 square feet. So I'm going to stop sharing this and show what happens when we go to the next one. Which is five feet, which would be more probably typical of what we're seeing. All right, so this is um, five feet of fill, so five times three, 15. So that red box around the house is 15 feet off the foundation. In order to keep 50 feet away from it to, to the lot line, the lot line would have to be pushed out to here on both sides, making 194 feet of frontage by 200 foot deep, making the lot 38,800 and I won't bother going through the whole process for the next one but if you had six feet of fill that would be 18 feet here on both sides of fill to the bottom of the slope and it would leave um, 25 feet from the fill to the lot line and <coughs> It would push the frontage out to 200 feet from the original 150. So I'm pointing this out because we might want to consider that 50 might be excessive. So the question would be, is 25 feet from the edge of the fill to the lot line sufficient enough to attenuate, mitigate, and absorb and prevent damage to the abutting lots or street well I mean considering if you got from like with it fill goes to the bottom right yeah and you know, I have what 25 feet now it, it well that was five feet of fill coming in yeah and it goes to to the property line of 200 of the 150 feet no so you get 20 so that's 28 on the 5 28 but for six feet it would be 25 feet Okay, so it'd be 25 feet each of the, of the original lot line. Lot line. Um, so the question would be if somebody were scrutinizing our decisions, is 50 excessive and is there a justification for it or is 25 feet adequate? Now the more fill they use, I mean they go up 8 feet of fill, obviously. And it's going to be a problem. That's going to be a problem. I mean, or then are you going to require them to have drain or Minimal it burns all the way around their entire property or to catch the water to keep it from shedding off to somebody's property. Or retention. Now you're making moats around all of these That's islands the that they're creating. Or can we say if you go above, what's that, five feet? Yep. If you go above five feet, it becomes you're going to have 50 feet. Uh, 50 feet. Now that's a possibility. So we could add a third paragraph paragraph there mm -hmm. that to prevent that from happening at least because it is, you know you, I don't know what's the highest I've, what's the highest that you think is like is eight feet I know eight feet's high but 
Has that been done around here? So the ones on, on lamppost, I believe they think be they ready? built the cellar floor yeah. right at existing grade. Yeah. I, I noticed that I stopped in there today. Yeah. And there was one that looked like it was right on the right at the level. Yeah. They just getting ready they just put the base of it in and it looks like it's level to where so it's, it's basically supposed to be. Then, so they're going the then they're going the eight feet up, which is the foundation. Yeah. So, so it is possible. Two, usually they leave two, two and a half feet from, from the foundation. Yeah. So That's six feet. So six feet, five and a half, six feet is probably what they're using down there. Um, and so in that case there, you might want to have it push out from 25 or you might want to stick with it. I just, um, only bringing this up because somebody may come in and say, you're arbitrarily excessive and it's no reasoning behind it there's no science behind it and um, well then we could ask them to show us a way that they're going to mitigate the runoff so it doesn't go on to an abutter's property or onto the town's property yeah, onto the road but that should be i mean why should the town have to deal with all the stormwater runoff that's now being shed on the town property and having to put catch basins and everything else along exactly. the roads because those these houses were all going up higher. Those ones up on Scotland Street, those are pretty much, I would say, if you look at the back compared to the where the fill is into the front, that's probably a good almost, it's probably good eight feet just about. Because if you notice, if you walk into a, some of them have the walk-in basements, like that one that just put the addition, then you look at the front, I mean, it's, it's close to probably eight feet of that fill going in the front. Yep. And if they had that around the whole buck back of the house, I mean, look what there's, look what there's, that's going on now with the, the watering. So if you had a, um, let's say you had a water table at um, 30 inches, two and a half feet below the ground, and you're building a new septic system, <coughs> And then that type of soil, it's probably a very slow perk rate. So you only have to have four foot water table separation. So, so two and a half in the yeah. ground, uh, the water tables two and a half in the ground. So you only need a foot and a half above the existing ground to have the bottom of your system. Yeah. So there's a foot and a half, right? Foot and a half, yeah. two right. and a half. Plus, four. The, size of Plus the size of the leaching chambers, mm -hmm. which are roughly let's say a foot plus the foot of cover over the top so we're talking about two three and a half feet of fill typically would be about four so that so would four be feet minimum four feet minimum. minimum so the four foot to the five foot would seem to cover a lot of those uh, high water table issues and mm -hmm. and so four foot was 31 feet from the toe of the slope to the property line, original 150 by 200, and the five foot was 28. So you might want to stick with the 28 and then anything above that. Above that. Now, would they say if anybody comes in and say, oh, no, the regular lot size is 30,000 square feet. Now we have to buy a bigger lot size. They could argue on that. Well, if if um, it works with the 28 feet, let's say, to, from the fill, using the standard 150 by 3, 200, which is 30,000 standard lot, they don't have to get a bigger lot. True. But if we start requiring that 50, they're going to need a bigger lot every time. And that's probably where we're going to get the argument. Or if we say if we went back, say if we went down to, instead of 50 feet, do, we just did 40 feet. Just leave it at that, 40 feet. 40 would still put it out bigger than what it's needed. Yeah, and we dropped it 10 feet back. I would still say leave it at the 50 and then have them, if they want to make it less, come up with a plan to mitigate it. And if they go over a certain height, make it a little, make it. Okay. No, so leave it at the 50, yeah, leave it at the 50. And then they have to show us. And we can grant yes. waivers and we can grant, I mean, if they want to engineer it so that they've got a way to control the flow or the water that it's not going to be shed. Yeah, there's my whole thought about this whole thing was, if, if, we, if we all agree to it, stick to it and that's it. Because we've got to think of what's going to happen 
in the future. You don't want to the road because it's getting worse as it is. I mean, it's one thing to stick seven houses in and just mound them up, but if we can get four houses and make it look decent, it's going to be more appealing, I think, to the just in general to everybody. I mean, uh, John's diagrams, I mean, these are great because yeah, you've got enough depth going back, but most of them are 35 or 40 feet yeah. or less off the road, and when you've got that slope from six feet down to the road, it's not level, and you've got, and most of them aren't catching that water at all. Really it's just, going right and, out. No, I mean, you get a, I mean, we're seeing 100-year storms every five years, four years now. <laughs> I mean, Doesn't that water's got to go somewhere. And yeah, I mean, like I said, I, like he said, I agree with him. I think we should just leave it at the 50, stick to it, and just, if and they get a problem, if sure. they got a problem, we can understand if they have a hardship on something like that. We, like you said, we can grant, uh, grant them the waiver. But this is basically for, for new development. New development. New construction. It's going to be for new development, basically. So I think we should stick to it with this. If you know, they have a problem with it, they can, they can come in front of and show us, like you said, how they're going to work. Another clause, like you were saying, if it was over the five foot. On top of this? Right. I mean, to. Or just anything fit the five foot in the fifth. I mean, we don't get many that are. I don't think it's really high. six feet. I would say probably is the average now. Is is what the average is that we we're getting. Well, bear in mind that uh, we have the lot shape factor now, so True. that's going to prevent. True. Yeah. The shot right. the, the lots that you see in lamp posts. It's going to shoot. Or loop drive. Shoot them all yeah. down. Yeah, that in general is just going to shoot down construction. So there's going to be a bigger footprint, footprint to have that 50 foot. Yep. And also, these some of these people that come in here, look at the houses that are being built. If they want to put a big house like they're putting up on lamppost, and they say, oh, we can't fit it in even with this, okay, well, you're going to have to make a smaller house. You're going to have to make... Or let's say a different style house. Different style right. to make it fit in... Wick, instead of two cars, it might have to be one car because up there is like there's one that's got three cars, it might have to go down to two cars. So, rewinding way back to Bill Adams Ames Drive, Ames Drive, I think it's called, um, over off of South Street, we had him redesign the configuration of the house so that it wasn't sprawling out this way, it went front to back. And it still contained four sure. bedrooms that he was looking for, the garage. And you have a two, two car garage, but it's twice as deep on one side. And also, right. they, they could all they can always put the garage in the basement, half the basement, if they have to, to make it fit right. So Might not work for them, but you know, hey, you got to make it work that way. So he went along with that and yeah. we approved it and the person who bought the land decided that they wanted the lungs drawn out lung type house and they ended up buying land from the abutter to make it work and, and still maintain the distance we were looking for. And they made it work. Uh, but um, you're going to have people who want that house that you see typically in every subdivision, sprawling out, two-car garage. Um, family rooms attached to the main structure of the house and, and so forth. This type of regulation might require them to start rethinking the, the styles of the house, which the builders are going to squawk because they have an idea, except for right now with the cost of uh, wood being so uh, vital, uh, volatile, uh, they will not be able to say, geez, that's, that, that's going to cost me X number of dollars because this is the same house I always build and now you're making them do something different and they're going to be unaware of what it's going to cost. So that's not our issue, but... Um, but even with the with the way the lots have to be now, the lot size right. shape, the that's just going to deter a lot of the size houses that have been put on, going to be, put, could fit or not fit, whatever. So. So you want to 
maintain the 50 and then possibly grant waivers if they can show that it is justified. Yeah. Carol, what do you think? I, well, I, how I think about this is the soil that we're talking about can only support certain kinds of building on it right. in a way, right? right? Mm -hmm. That's what I think what I hear we're talking about. And so that, um, so I get upset when I hear about, well, we got to, the builder wants this because it's going to be money for me, right? So I think the, the what, however we can do, do preserve the soil and the storm water runoff and all that, that's what we should be concentrating on. And I think that's what, and I, and I like what you've done in terms of that, I can understand that, and that makes sense to me. And if they have to make a bigger lot in order to make it work, then that's what they got to do. But yeah, now if that I improves the stormwater that will recharge why and why keeps it from... Why should we have to, or the town have to, do all this management of something that doesn't need to be done? Well, that's something that can be prevented, and hopefully this is going to exactly. prevent that from happening. Right. So, so that's the way I think about it. Yeah, and that's the way I, I thought about it, too, when I was thinking of this. I'm like, it just, in the long run, it's going to make things better for everybody, I think for the town environment, the neighbors, so and just in general mm -hmm. developments going in. It's gonna make. So your answer, your, when you ask the question, well, people are, uh, there's no scientific evidence or anything. Can't we just say, well, th these types of soils um, um, say that this kind of, uh, it only supports this kind of development. Yep. Yeah, and that's what the preamble is supposed to, to talk about. So. Right, and by giving the three types of criteria to look at, to use as, it's not you telling them you have to use just one, but no, there are three different types we look at, and there's a reason for it that, I mean, the soil's telling you that you're not going to get it to drain. Yeah. It's going to hit that water table, and it's only going to go so fast. And, and there's a reason why you gotta, yeah, you're going to build detention areas around places because it's not going to allow the water to flow out. The example home. that the new houses that they did on South Street, the one at the end of the field mm -hmm. that has the, the, the vernal pool area that used to dry yeah. up and they'd hay it every... It's been there for right. ever. But most summers it used to dry out by the end of it's August. Do that now. It doesn't. I have not seen that thing dry in 10 years. And yeah. it's just gotten worse with the amount of development in the neighborhood. I mean, I, I, I used to see them finally get in there and hay it oh, once yeah. for the first time in August. We used to be able to do it probably two, maybe three times out of the season. Yeah. And now you out. cannot get in there at all. I guarantee that bitch is going to start growing cat nine tails oh, and yeah. all that stuff. Oh, yeah. It's going to be it's a wet, wetland, permanent one. I'm surprised the ducks haven't come in yet this spring. They were there last year. <laughs> no, so we'll, we'll stick with the 50 then. Sounds good to me. I would. Okay. And then they can throw what they have to throw at us and... We'll just right. give them the reason to. Is this bylaw going to go before the town? No, this is a public hearing, so it'll have to be advertised, advertised and people okay. can come in and, and argue with the commission. And we can tell them. And you vote <laughs> after all of that debate, and then it goes into a regulation. All right. All right. So thank you, John, for that. Thank you for doing that, Thank you for those. That helps me. <laughs> <laughs> what did I do? Well, you, you do pictures. I like pictures. Yeah, the visuals help so you can really... They do help. Yeah. Understand what it's... Yeah. Am I out of the meeting myself? I also appreciated the three-to-one <laughs> thing with the... That makes sense. Yeah. Oh, this just makes me so much happier. Seriously. And do you have Anybody? any invoices, John? I do. Um, <coughs> so hopefully, I apologize if anybody got kicked out of the meeting, but uh, I think there was only one person on it, if that was the case. So I think we covered it. So we have a um, certificate of compliance for 373. We have uh, the determination of applicability for 19 Scotland Street, 34 North Main Street Certificate of Compliance. We have uh, 
Pleasant Street gas line determination of applicability. And we have a W.B. Mason of 126 dollars, 126 dollars and eight cents for um, 36 by 500 foot roll of um, copy paper for the large format printer. Uh, that should last us for quite a while. Uh, markers and pencils. We have the surety return for a certificate of compliance for Turnpike Street. I went out and checked, made sure the signs were put up on the posts, and they are, so we're returning that. And um, Town Book Bindery Inc., the fellow who takes all our minutes and puts them into a binder for $245.53. So those are all of them. If you want to I'll I'll entertain a motion to approve the invoices. I'll make the motion. Second. Second all the favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. And is there anything else? There isn't. And I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Second. Move and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved.